Images in Markdown are pretty much exactly the same as links. There's just a few things that you need to know about it. So the format for it is bang, square brackets, parentheses. And then the bang says that it's an image. The square brackets are the alternate text that is going to show up uh, to your screen reader users as well as to search engines. And in the parentheses is where the link to uh, your image will go. So I'm going to take this image and put it in here. Then I have maybe like a wow, great pick. Give it a save. And you'll notice that uh, it shows up if I hover over top. Actually, it's not going to show up if I hover over top because alternate text doesn't show up. If you actually wanted the tooltip to show up, that's a title. And you can go ahead and say, this is the tooltip in there, just like we did with the links. And if I hover over top of this now, it shows up. This is the tooltip. So again, bang is for images. Square brackets are for the alternate text of that image. And you can uh, feel free to leave that empty if you don't actually have an alternate text, but uh, don't give the middle finger to your blind users. Uh, and then your link to the actual thing. Now, a um, couple other things that we can do it with is we can say uh, if we have a bang square bracket and then another set of square brackets to maybe like a cute pup. I think this one is a pup and we will say pup. And just like we did with the links, we can go ahead and say pup is equal to that. Now we'll give it a save. You'll notice that the pup shows up here, even though that uh, this is the actual link. Like if I said uh, pup fix, give it a save and put like the pup all the way at the bottom, give it a save. You notice that it still shows up and anywhere I wanted to reference the pup, I would just have to use the square bracket that we had in there. Another thing that people often want to do is make a link link to a larger version of that photo. So uh, let's take this one right here and I'm just going to go ahead and say maybe this is the larger version, the 500 pixels by 500 pixels version. So I'm going to go ahead and make a link and just paste it in there. And if I said a link in text, you know, so it will link off to it. However, if I want to make maybe a uh, 50 pixel by 50 pixel version of it, I can go inside of here and just do my nested markdown square bracket parenthesis, paste that in there and then change this out to be 50 PX. And now when I have over top of that, it will link to the larger version. I can click it and it will open it up in my browser. It's a little bit of a funky syntax. Uh, another thing you can do if you don't like that is you can just go ahead and use the uh, image source that you're used to. And whoa. There we go, and that will work as well. So uh, that's one little thing about Markdown is that when you don't have something that you can't, or when you can't do something in Markdown, you can just write regular HTML in its place uh, and everything will work uh, as it planned. Uh, same thing goes for width and height. There is no width and height. If you wanna control the width and the height, you just need to use a regular old image tag with the link to your dog.jpg and you have to give it a width 500 and a height of 500 in there. Um, if you are okay with resizing it in CSS, you can also just pop a style tag in there and say a width 200 PX and that will apply assuming that your markdown that gets output will also uh, resize it for you. So you can put a style tag pretty much anywhere you want and uh, this won't work on GitHub and forms and things like that. But if you're writing like a blog post or uh, something like that, you can expect your CSS to be applied to your markdown as it's generated. Uh, same thing goes for a fig figure tag where you have a fig caption. Caption tag, you can't do figure and fig caption in markdown, so you'd have to write the regular old HTML that you're used to for that one. Mm -hmm.